what is going on YouTube big dogs fam let me fix this right quick uh, I guess I have to spend the first minute of this video apologizing to y'all obviously I missed last week I was at the Meadows Festival I'm sure you guys heard about it if you didn't you know how Kim K got robbed she got that gun pointed at her head or whatever Kanye ran off the stage when he heard about it I was at that concert I was there watching Kanye while he ran off the stage it was dope. He was dope. He was only halfway through his set. Whatever. The concert was dope. The weekend was crazy. I was there Saturday, Sunday. I didn't even watch a lick of football on Sunday, so I'm not going to be out here like a fraud and be pretending like I saw that shit and then put a video out for you guys. And it doesn't matter. Week five's in the books, and I'm back. Your boy's back. To kick things off, top waiver wire pickups, some shits like that. And uh, it's actually like mad late right now. It's 8 o'clock, almost 8 o'clock on Tuesday night. So this shit probably won't even be on YouTube until like 11 tonight. But that gives you like four or five hours to hit your waiver wire, bro. So don't be mad at me. But again, I apologize for, you know, this kind of getting out of hand with the timing and all that stuff. But I'm super busy with the new job and everything is going swell. But um, it's time to get back into the swang of thang. So without further ado, play that ish. So we're going to kick this off, obviously, with the injuries cover, who went out, what they're looking like for this next upcoming week, you know, any updates and news that we have that's going to help us with the waiver wire and, you know, figure that ish out. First off, I'm using my laptop here as notes because, honestly, it's fucking annoying having to look back at the computer and then fucking say it to you guys and have to whole edit that process up. So I got my notes here written down, right here, which I'm going to work off of. So, uh, first up, obviously, is Eddie Lacy left with that ankle injury late in the game. Dame Starks took over for a while. Uh, no prognosis on Eddie Lacy yet. It's obviously very sore. They're not sure what his week six status is going to be yet. Um, so, that's going to be something you're going to have to monitor throughout the week for Eddie Lacy. He looked very good before going down. Still fat, but he looked good. Not physically, just running the ball wise. Uh, Steve Smith hurt his ankle as well. He didn't return to. He tried to return to the game. Had to leave the game again. Um, so we're gonna have to wait for further news on that one as well. That one seemed a little more serious because if a dude like Steve Smith can't get his ass back in the game, like who? Nobody's getting their ass back in the game if he can't do it. You know. So that's a boost to the other wide receivers there. Obviously, a guy like Mike Wallace. So um, got Eddie Lacy, Steve Smith, Charles Sims. Breaking news yesterday. Sent to the IR which is a huge boost up for Doug Martin because, you know, he lost a lot of passing down work to Charles Sims, and you'd have to think he's getting uh, most of that back now that Charles Sims is on the IR, which is surprising. Um, I don't think there's really any other major injuries we have to worry about now, or I'm probably just missing them, and I don't really care. Uh, so let's move to the top waiver wire ads. If you're looking to stream quarterbacks, first off, we have Brian Hoyer, who's back-to-back -back monster weeks. Uh, he capped off his game at the Bucks with 300 and was it 97 yards, two touchdowns. Now he gets the Jags. He's got a plethora, like that high-risk vocabulary right there. He's got a plethora of weapons around him between Jordan Howard now cast, catching balls, uh, Eddie Royal, Meredith. We'll talk about him in a little bit. Alshon Jeffrey, Zach Miller, you know, he's got the whole squad there catching balls for him. So he's looking good. He's looking way better than Cutler, obviously. Um, it's Hoyer's job to lose. So going forward, I mean, they get the Jags at home next week. Another really good streaming option for you. Then you have uh, Alex Smith of the Chiefs. Now, uh, Smith is, you know, a guy that you know his, you know his ceiling. It's not crazy high because the volume of passing is not... Always there, but uh, he's been a top 15 quarterback three of the last four weeks. Um, now he gets... What do they get now? Just wait on it. Who's gonna kiss me when I'm gone? That new John Legend song is fire. I can't stop listening to it. I forget what it's called, too. I just fucking forget everything. I'm like useless out here. I don't put videos up every week. I'm, I'm like, I forget everything. 
who the fuck did the Chiefs get? Oh, the Chiefs get the Raiders with an over-under of 47 in that game. The Raiders let up about 35 points to every single team that they go against. Uh, should be a shootout in Oakland. Uh, so I would assume high passing volume from Alex Smith again. So I like both of those guys as streaming options um, at the quarterback position. But let's move to the skill position. That's what everyone's worried about, of course. So we have Doug Martin hurt. We have Charles Sims to the IR, which meant Jacquez Rogers played the feature role for the Bucks on Monday Night Football. He touched the ball 35 fucking times. Um... And he produced pretty well for, you know, what what he, you know, for what the Carolina Panthers defense gave him. He wore down at the end of the game, obviously, so I, you know, it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be something you'll see out of him again. They have a week six bye, uh, and then Doug Martin should be back. So to be honest with you, I'm not high on going out and blowing number one waiver on Jack Quiz. I'm not high on spending a lot of fab budget on him. Um... So I'm not even really sure why the fuck he's on this list and why I started talking about him as the number one guy. Uh, but he's someone to keep an eye on if maybe some news comes out about Martin this week that he had a setback or something. He's someone you want to pick up. Um, and then I briefly spoke about James Starks. Now, uh, he didn't look good when Lacey exited the game, but like we've seen James Starks produce. He was really good last year in the games that, um, that Eddie Lacey was out for or that Starks was the featured back. Hold on, I screenshotted an interesting... Uh, tweet that I saw the other day about James Starks. Who's gonna miss me when I'm gonna... In the six games, James Starks saw at least 50% of the snaps in 2015. He averaged 13 and a half carries, four and a half targets, 92 yards and half touchdown, and 15.8 fantasy points per game. Uh, so those are RB1 numbers right there. And I, I mean, it, people are gonna rank it him in like the low 20s if Eddie Lacy's out which I think is insane because I think if you're the feature back in that Green Bay offense you're automatically a low end RB1 by default because since Eddie Lacy's out he's going to get all the work it's not like he has to split it with anyone so um I'm going to be you know if I need a fill in for running back this week I'm going to be betting pretty heavily on a guy like James Starks because he's going to put up 12 to 15 fantasy points for you without a doubt if Eddie Lacy's out uh with that being said obviously we don't know if Eddie Lacy's out so um, you know, if, if you're, if you're looking, if your team is doing good right now, um, and you don't need like a Hail Mary or home run shot, I would probably stay a little more conservative, but if you're in the bottom half of your league and you're looking for a little spark plug going on, I would, uh, you know, bet a little more on getting James Starks on your team because you're going to need someone to blow up this week and he could be that guy if Eddie Lacy's out. Again, we don't really know, uh, what his deal is, so, um, also, they get the Cowboys next week, who are the fourth worst rush defense in the league, letting up 4.6 yards per carry to opposing rushers. So that's, you know, an added bonus, of course. Uh, next, we're running back up, Devonta Booker. Now, this is more of a deeper stash because C.J. Anderson is definitely still the guy there. Uh, but it's just worth noting uh, that in this last game versus the Falcons, uh, Booker saw just four fewer touches and had three less total yards than C.J. Anderson. Um, now, I, a lot of that had to do with them trailing the entire game, and I guess the Broncos see him as uh, a good pass-catching back, at least good enough to split the work with C.J., because C.J. still did see a decent number of targets, or around the same amount of targets that Booker did, so it's not like uh, Booker's going to be taking over the feature role anytime soon, but uh, there's not a lot of guys in the NFL that are pure handcuffs to number one guys. Um, it's like Devonta Booker, um, James Starks to Eddie Lacy, D'Angelo Williams to Le'Veon Bell, um, and then obviously the any ones that do like an RBBC, which would be like a Jeremy Hill, Gio, uh, Coleman, Freeman. So any of those guys go down, the other guy automatically gets boosted up to a, an RB1 status just based on the volume that they're going to get in high-powered offenses. Um, so Devonta Booker is definitely a speculative ad in, I think he should be owned in 12-team leagues or deeper anything like that so fire him up um he's only nine percent owned by the way i have all these percentages written down i keep telling forgetting to tell you guys uh but next let's move over to the wide receiver position um so we have 
couple Chicago Bears wide receivers. We have obviously Eddie Royal and Cameron Meredith. Now, obviously the news with Kevin White going to the IR means a lot of volume is going to be coming from that passing game, and it's going to need to go somewhere. Clearly, it ain't going to my fucking boy, Alshon Jeffrey. I don't know what Chicago's doing over there. I don't know what Brian Hoyer's doing. Uh, not throwing a possibly the most athletic wide receiver in the league. Uh, but whatever. I'm over it. It's That's how fantasy football works. Nothing makes sense. And so you have to expect the unexpected. And this means guys like Cameron Meredith going for nine Catches 130 yards and a touchdown, and um, he's only 3% owned in Yahoo leagues. He saw a team high 12 targets. Um, now, Cameron Meredith, he's undrafted. He ran a 4.42 at his pro day. Um, he's 6'3, 210 ish pounds, so he's, he's good size, good speed, so he can play that outside X role um, behind Jeffrey, you know. So, Depending on how Hoyer keeps distributing his targets, a lot of them are going to Zach Miller, obviously, and a lot of them are not going to Jeffrey. So Cameron Meredith could see himself increasing in this offense and eventually take over that, you know, 1A to Alshon Jeffrey's 1B kind of role here. Uh, could be one one game, you know, I'm not going to get ahead of myself here, but he's definitely someone to add in all leagues. Um, they get the Jags next, which are a pretty pass-happy defense, you know, letting up a lot of points. And then you have Eddie Royal also playing the slot there, who is seeing increased targets because of Kevin White's injury. And he's more widely owned. He's owned in 51% of Yahoo leagues. Um, saw nine targets yesterday. Um, and I think it just goes back to the fact that Chicago throws the ball a ton. They're trailing a ton. They're averaging 37 passes a game. Uh, so that's high volume there. If you're going to throw 40 times a game, you know, eight targets to Miller, eight targets to Jeffrey, you're leaving 25 targets on the board for guys like Royal, Meredith, things like that. So uh, there's plenty of volume, plenty of plenty of passing work to go around to everybody in that Chicago offense. Um, not that, you know, you want a huge part of that offense because they're not very good, but, you know, they're speculative ads for show, for show. Next up, we got Cole Beasley. He was on my list whenever my last video was, like 16 months ago. Uh, he's 40% owned, and right now he is one of Dak's favorite targets, if not the favorite target. As long as Des Bryant's continuing to be out, Cole Beasley's going to get his... He gonna, he gonna get his. He gonna eat. And uh, right now, last report I saw was Des Bryant's probably not going to be playing in Week 6 against the Pack. Um, so, you know, he's he scored double-digit PPR points in five straight games at Cole Beasley. Um, he's yet to go under 53 receiving yards. He went 453 in a touchdown last week. It was his first touchdown, so you know his ceiling is kind of capped there because of his red zone usage. They don't throw him the ball a ton there. Uh, they run the ball, and the clock ticks and ticks and ticks and ticks and ticks. But his floor is is super high for uh, especially in PPR leagues. He's going to get you double digit points almost every week. So I mean, as a wide receiver three or, or a sexy flexy. He can't be mad at someone who's going to give you 9 to 10 points with, you know, maybe a 14, 15 point upside. So that's that's where Cole Beasley's at. You know, he's he is the target leader in Dallas. He's averaging over six and a half targets a game. Um, and then they get the Packers next week. Ooh, the Packers have the number one rush defense in the league by far, bar none. They're averaging oh, uh, opposing rushers to rush for two yards per carry. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be an interesting matchup with Zeke and that offensive line going against the Packers elite rush defense. So, I, you know, you got to think that Dallas looks to pass the ball a little more and uh, gets Dak going. And that's only good news for Mr. Cole Beasley. So another hot, hot pickup there. 40% owned. And then you have one of the most interesting pickups in week six, for week six, Mr. Samuel Coates. Of the Pittsburgh Steelers, 37% owned in Yahoo leagues. I picked him up before last week in two or three of my leagues, played him as my wide receiver three, and it paid off in multiple dividends. He went six, five for 139 and two tutties on 11 targets, dropped like fucking four passes. I don't know what he was doing. How are you? What, it doesn't matter. He should have had like seven touchdowns. I'm pretty sure most owners were happy enough with the 140 and two touchdowns that he did provide. Now, Coates is 
basically taking over that Martavis Bryant role. Now, when you look at the snaps percentages, he's easy, he took over the number two role in that in that uh, in the wide receiver depth chart. There, he surpassed Marcus Wheaton. Eli Rogers hasn't been playing, so he's you know he's blew him out of the water. And now Coates is a legitimate deep threat there. He's a legitimate number two in a passing offense that throws the ball a ton, and they put up a ton of points. Um, their defense is not fantastic. Oh my god. Look at that. Their defense is not amazing, so uh, you know it, it's it's gonna keep them in most games. They're gonna be throwing the ball a ton. Um, another interesting fact: he. What the fuck is that? Only Will Fuller of the Texans has more targets that have gone 20 plus yards in the air on the season. Only only Will Fuller more than Sammy Coates, and Sammy Coates has the most receptions of balls that have traveled at least 20 yards in the air. Um, so obviously the drops are, are a concern for him because he could have had way more points. But just the fact that him playing that Martavis Bryant role is just, if he can put up 80% of what Martavis Bryant is capable of doing, you've got yourself a wide receiver three with wide receiver two upside there. They get the Miami Dolphins next week, which is like fucking gold for fantasy. Quarterbacks, wide receivers running. I mean, you fucking name it, and you're you're getting guys in your lineup that are playing Miami. Um, and lastly, we have Mr. Jeremiah Curley, 9% owned. This is criminal. This is criminal. He's he's basically a rich man's Cole Beasley at this point. He went uh, 8 for 102 and a touchdown in week 5 um, on 14 targets. Now he's averaging 9 targets a game. Like how many how many wide receivers are on your waiver wire that average 9 targets a game? Zero besides Jeremy the curl man. So um, he hasn't seen less than 6 targets in a single game and he's tied for seventh in the entire NFL for targets with Larry Fitz and I think it was Odell, was it? Fitz and Odell, tied for seventh in, in the NFL in targets. Um, his next three matchups, the Bills, the Saints, and the Bucks. Like, it's fucking cash money. Interestingly though, uh, they did name Colin Kaepernick the starter for the 49ers for this upcoming week, which I think might hurt his value a tiny bit because, you know, Kaepernick's got a bigger arm than Gabbert. Um, it's likely that he'll throw a bunch of deep bombs to a guy like Torrey Smith, uh, which could hurt Curly's floor, but I think he's still good for seven to eight targets a game, even with Kappa quarterback. I think they'll be able to open up the offense more, and I think they'll put together more drives. So, I mean, it could be a wash there. It should be interesting to see. But either way, Curly, you know, no one wants to have guys on shitty teams, but... Niners are going to be trailing a ton, which is always good news for wide receivers because they're going to be chucking the ball a ton, interestingly. So uh, moving over to tight ends, I guess. I didn't really write anything down for tight ends because I just fucking didn't feel like doing it. But I just wanted to circle back on my boy Martellus Bennett, which I told you all about all offseason. My bold prediction was going to be he was going to have more touchdowns than Rob Gronkowski. He's looking pretty damn fucking good right now. Um, coming off that three touchdown game, for some crazy ass reason, he is owned and not owned in one of your leagues. Uh, you need to grab him. You need, 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 need to grab him. He's a locked in tight end one going forward um, with Tom Brady back, obviously. Um, some other names I could just let me let me run down the the schedule for for this week and see if anyone pops. Uh, so there's been some little bit of rumor action going around with Ladarius Green coming back soon. Oh, Jesse James for week six at least. Uh, that's who I wanted to point out as well. I think I'm gonna pick him up in one of my leagues and stream his ass. Um, Jesse James. Julius Thomas practiced Monday, that's good. He was probably dropped in a bunch of leagues. Um, he's going against the Bears, so Julius Thomas is a great play this week. Um, you should go pick up Greg Olson because he's probably unknown in your league. Mm. Nah, I cannot buy into Charles Clay. I would, I would, you know, I like, I have, to, I put my name on this. What the fuck? I put my name on this YouTube channel. So if I were to tell you to pick up Charles Clay, I wouldn't feel, I wouldn't be able to sleep tonight. I wouldn't feel good about myself. What else we got? 
Okay, so what I'm saying, Jesse James, the Dolphins. I don't know what I'm talking about. You, you know, like what, what more do I need to say besides pick his ass up and play him against the Dolphins? Um, he caught what he caught. He went six for six of eight targets, 43 yards and a touchdown last week uh, over the Jets, and now he gets the Dolphins. So you know, that offense throws the ball 40 times a game. He's gonna get six, seven, eight targets consistently, and. Uh, well, they try to bottle up guys like Antonio Brown and Sammy Coates on the outside. They're going to have to leave the middle of the field open, you know. Just it's, it's how football works. Got to pick and choose. Um, so, yeah. So, Jesse James is nice. Um, eh, I don't love Dwayne Allen. But Zach Ertz might be available. Someone might have dropped him. You know, another tip here on waiver wire days, like Wednesday morning when you wake up and see who you got, you know, who everyone picked up. You have to see who people dropped. That is huge because especially during these bye weeks, people don't have room to fit everyone on the roster, so they might drop someone worth adding. Um, I'm in a bunch of leagues, and I've seen, I saw Spencer Ware dropped. I saw Seattle defense dropped in multiple leagues. I saw Jimmy Graham dropped. I saw, I, I even saw Des Bryant dropped in a league. These are things you need to keep an eye out for because as much you know this is i'm more most i'm just as excited to see who people dropped as i am to see who i picked up because there's sometimes you know uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure i don't know if i said that right but you know what i'm saying so check those that's a pro tip there not a pro tip it's just to do the damn thing um let's get my dogs run into my door now what else we got for this week Give you a lock of the century. I haven't been one of those bad boys in a while. Lock of the century this week. I'm gonna say. Mm, let me look at the lines very quick. I have to pick. I'm still alive in my survivor pool. And you guys do. If you do survivor pool, let me know if you're still in. Let me know who you're picking this week. I'm thinking. You know, survivor pool is you get to pick one team to straight up win that week, and then for the rest of the season, you're not allowed to pick that team again. If you pick a losing team, obviously you're knocked out. Um, so I've learned over the last four years, I've been terrible at them, that do not, don't even fuck around and try to get cute the first four or five weeks because to be honest with you, up to that point in the season, you don't even know which teams are good and which teams aren't good. It's it's all speculative, so stick with the stick with the biggest favorites for the first few weeks until you actually figure out you know, who's good and who's not. So I'm thinking about taking the Steelers this week. I don't like using a survivor pick on fucking teams that aren't at home. Like, you have the luxury of picking anyone you want. Uh, Steelers, minus 7.5 over the Dolphins. I like the Steelers because I just hate that Dolphins. Obviously, you've heard me all fucking video. Patriots are minus 8.5 against the Bengals. I don't like that because, you know, like, the Bengals have so much potential. Any given week, they could fucking play with their opponents. My... I'm taking the Chiefs straight up. That's my lock of the century this week. The Chiefs, it's a pick em. Chiefs Raiders in Oakland. Chiefs coming off a bye. Should be healthy. Should see some Jamal Charles action. I think that defense is going to be nice, rested, ready to go. I think they take down Oakland at home. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go there. And uh, I think that wraps it up for the video. Wave of wires, injuries. What else do I want to say? Yeah, it's going to wrap it up. So, you know, again, I appreciate you guys watching. And I apologize for the missed video last week. I'm going to keep trying to roll these out Monday or Tuesday every week. You can always comment on the video. I'll try to get to all your answers. Email. Hit me on Twitter. At BDGE underscore Fantasy FB. If you like the video, like that shit. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you're new, welcome. My name is Nick. And I run Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. Subscribe, share, like. Um, whatever, man. Whatever, man. Have a good night, y'all. I gotta get some sleeps. And I gotta eat some pasta.